Welcome to my channel, where I do something tutorial-wise every one and a half years or so, whenever I think I've done something actually clever. In this video, I will be talking about how I managed to put a variable amount of for loops inside of one another, and how you can easily do the same yourself. I will be showing it in C Sharp, but I also made it in Java, and I will show how it works there, and that it works there. I'll quickly walk through it first, so the people who just want to see how I did it can copy it and use it themselves, and after that I'll explain a bit more how exactly it works, give a bit more explanation, and explain how you can do slightly more with it than just the very bare version I will be showing first. This is the part where the variable amount of for loops are made. It looks like a lot, it's not particularly. A lot of it is actually just the text, because this can also be found on Git, on GitHub. I will link it in the description. First off, the variable amount of for loops, which is given in the function, so I definitely can't hard code it anywhere or something like that. Uh, total number. This is totally irrelevant, this is just to do with basically the visual element so I can show that it works. Loop number. This is something you kind of need, you also kind of don't. It's interesting. This is the primary part on how it actually gets to work. You need a list or an array list that contains lambda statements. This lambda statement requires at least one integer as a variable, without it it won't work. Other than that, really it can have anything. Then you get to actually define the variable. You get to define the actual lambda statements. First off, just a loop, in this case a very simple loop that goes from 1 to 10, but inside it, well you do something interesting. Call towards the nested loop container, find the integer variable that has been given as part of this lambda statements, and increase it by 1. That's the container item you need, and then you need to invoke it. And you need to give it the same variable as that you basically got. Then you need to create the actual function. Just what's the thing that you're going to do inside of your nested loops. In this case it just prints the total number that we declared here and then increases the number by one. The integer that has been given along in this case does nothing, but it is required to well, both these lambda statements are required to be the exact same type. So in both cases, here it needs the integer. So here it's required to have the integer, even if it does nothing. Then here we get to actually nest all the loops inside one of another. One of another. So in this case, surprisingly, to make a variable amount of for loops inside one another, you need a for loop. Just from zero to the amount of total loops, and for each time you add the loop into the nested loop container. And very lastly, you need to add the function also towards the nested loop container. Then to actually use it, you simply call the loop container number zero, in this case I use loop number, but really you can just put in zero invoke, and also once more zero, or in this case, the loop number. And this runs. We have done it four times, so it counts to ten four times inside one of another, so it goes up to the point of ten thousand. And would you look at that, we started at zero, and we made our way to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. So this works. Um, for those who just needed to look at it, I hope you enjoyed, I hope it works for you, it really should.
So let's start giving an explanation for why this works. And I think the easiest way to do this is really to work backwards. So inside here, I'm just going to pretty much write out kind of what happens. So we call forward this thing. So we call for the nested loop container number zero. Well, what's the first thing inside of there? Well, the first thing we put in is, right, here we add a loop. So really what we do here is instead of this, we do that. But of course, these are here zero. Okay, so we now have a for loop and each time it runs by something, it calls to, oh, once more, the nested loop container and it invokes it. But this time, instead of invoking it with zero, it invokes it with one. So what was the second thing we added? Well, in this case, it was once more, we add the nested loop. So this would turn into this, except that this would now be one in both cases. And effectively, well, once more, because it's four times, so then it becomes 2, which then turns into 3. So now we have our variable amount of loops inside of one another. But now it gets of course interesting because now it needs to invoke the last one. But of course, after we have done all the things, we actually include the function. So the last time it call it's called, instead this is called. And the loop number is basically lost the last time because it's not invoked. Of course the way it's written here, each time the integer i is initiated, which it doesn't like. You can't initiate i here when it's already initiated. But of course, well really this all doesn't exist inside of this for loop, it's just a function that's invoked. So in the function that's invoked, really this variable does not exist when this is pretty much done. On one side that's great, so I can make pretty much an infinite amount of for loops inside of one another. No problem with that at all. Of course, the problem with this is you can't use these. And normally we use i because it stands for index, because normally, or at least very often, you want to use this to pretty much run through all items in an array. You want to have all the indexes. Now, of course, we're smart. We're programmers. We should know how to figure that out, right? We actually can, it's not even that difficult. So let's just close that one and let's instead of the normal variable amount of loops, we run variable amount of loops complicated. Hey, would you look at that? We have run, well, each time we've gotten four different indexes. First time, zero, 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 zero. 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, etc. Through all of them. Now, of course, how this is done, we know. We know how we can do a variable amount of loops because, well, just to show that it actually works. Hey, would you look at that? Now we have only have three indexes. So, how does this work? Well, it's really fucking simple, really. In this case, we just make an array of indexes. An array of indexes as long as the amount of loops. And inside of each for loop, we just take the indexes, put in the loop number, and that loop number gets that index. And so each time, pretty much the first loop puts in the, its first index, and it then moves into the second for loop, which puts in the second index, the third for loop puts in the third index, and then it's accessible to the actual function. 
In this case, I also show that, well, that I need to give this string along. Especially if this string is going to change in any way. Or you need it for the final loop, for instance, if I wanted to use. If I didn't want to declare this here, but outside of it. So that will be played in a faster time, because my god did I fail at that. But now I've rewritten it so, especially if you want to do more complicated stuff than just this really. For instance, it should be quite simple to really make a version of this that's just takes in this final statement and the rest is just it just takes care of the whole looping thing but in this case also the string is just given along it's literally a give along thing that's just given to the next loop to the next loop to the next loop and then into the actual function but in this case, we actually have all these indexes, this array of indexes. And in the final function, well, we literally use another for loop to go through all the indexes. And that's how we end up with this nice array of indexes that we can then actually use. It's not actually used here, but here it's just the indexes are printed. But we now know that it actually can work. Lastly, let's also just show it in Java. As should be relatively obvious, it's pretty much the exact same. The amount of loops. This I will shortly explain. The array list that contains all the lambda statements. Lambda 1 which contains the loops and calls for the next loop each time. The lambda that contains the actual function. And as I said, I will explain shortly. The amount of loops, just the adding of all the loops, and finally the actual function, and then invoking it. Of course, because it's Java, you do also need to, as far as I'm aware at least, actually make the lambda statement, which in this case is extremely simple. It's just, well, it's the function with a number. Congratulations, it's a functional uh, interface. It works. The only thing that probably is different is, well in this case I can't use the same thing as I did previous time. Java does not like me changing this number in here. The local variable total defined in an enclosing scope must be final or effectively final. So I can print it, that's not a problem. I can print total but I can't change total, not inside of the loop. That's pretty much where just a number comes in. Just a number holds a number. It's created with a number. In our case, it's created with zero. And it can then print the number, or you can just give the number. Anyone really works. And then it ups the number. Really, it does nothing. It's just a way that I can recreate the exact same thing as I did with the... With what I did in C-Shop. So once more, four loops, each one going from 0 to 10. So 10 to the power of 4. And bada bing bada boom, you go from 0 to 99. Only difference is, you can't change a variable inside of one of these functions. It's not a fan. But, well, in most cases, there's an easy way around it. Like in this case, I just made a little class that does it itself, that does it instead. Now, if you listened carefully, you may have heard something that may be interesting. Four loops from 0 to 10. So, 10 to the power of 4. Because, yes, in a lot of cases, you can work around the need for a variable amount of four loops with just... A bit of simple math. But honestly, if we put away any ideas for something cool and interesting that may be useful for some things, because we could come up with a solution in a different way that works for now, then so many cool ideas would have been left behind. I think this is so nicely clever. Even if it's... well one, it wouldn't exactly have been necessary, I could have actually done it by making clever use of 
pretty much to the power of and modulo or however it's called in uh, English that thing but to be completely honest I didn't need a variable of amount of full loops inside of one another anyway I misread the thing I needed to do and discovered a way to do this completely without actual needing to so yeah I guess I make this video to I don't know, make something out of actually fingering this out. But yeah, it's... I think it's cool, it's interesting. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found this useful or informative. Maybe just this just gives you another tool in the arsenal of... Oh, I didn't think about using... I don't know, lambda statements inside of an array like this. No idea if anyone will find this useful, but if you did, I don't know, let me know or something. If you use it... I don't know, maybe leave a little marker inside of the code just saying Hey, I got this idea from this dude on the internet. But yeah, um, this was a silly tutorial. I hope someone found it useful maybe, or just interesting. Really, it's more interesting than useful. This has been Vinix, saying farewell. Mm -hmm.